The Institute for Economic Affairs has issued a report which suggests a prospective Labour government could be a threat to gender-critical free speech. The report is titled Transgender Ideology, a New Threat to Liberal Values and says, quote, there are concerning indications that a future Labour government would introduce new hate speech legislation with serious implications for freedom of speech. So I'm joined to discuss this by the report's author, Mark Glendening, and Maya Forstata, the co-founder of women's rights group sexmatters.org. Thanks both for coming. Thank you. Uh, Mark, I'm going to come to you first because you authored the report. Could you tell us what your findings are in a nutshell? Well, in a nutshell, we see a movement, transgender ideology, which must be made distinct from transgenderism. We're not talking about the right of people to identify however they want uh, verbally, but we're talking about a movement that wants to control through state regulation the way in which we use language yeah. and the way in which we think about sex uh, and related issues. So, for example, three weeks ago the Labour Party said that if they come to power, they will make it illegal for psychotherapists and uh, parents to have a conversation with patients and children who are thinking of having a sex change operation. And it would be illegal to do anything but affirm that desire, because they yes. say that is conversion therapy. Right. So, so any child who's suffering from gender dysphoria or feelings of, of discomfort in their, in their body, uh, that will be outlawed to even talk about that, to even talk it through. In private, if you, unless you affirm that person's desire to go through with sex change surgery. And this is not just the Labour Party. I mean, there are Conservative members of Parliament like Theresa May and Alicia Kearns who also are calling for this legislation. Boris Johnson was going to introduce this uh, piece of legislation and then there was a pause. Yes. So, but this is something Labour is saying they're definitely going to do. And, uh, Maya, so it, uh, you obviously are from Sex Matters. Your group is particularly worried about this kind of legislation. Can you just briefly tell us what Sex Matters does? Um, well, we're a human rights organisation. We're not women's rights organisation, but women's rights are part of human rights. Um, and we campaign for clarity on sex in law and policy in the UK. And so this kind of legislation would be particularly worrying, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Um, the conversion therapy uh, legislation that's proposed would be a chilling effect on therapists, on teachers, uh, potentially on parents, youth workers, social workers, anyone who's dealing with a child uh, who is confused about their sex um, and is worried, you know, is thinking that they may be the opposite sex or they want to change gender. Um, as, as Mark said, it would be a chilling effect on any professionals talking to that child and saying, you know, what's the base of, of why you're feeling this way? Exactly. I mean, as, as, as many people have pointed out, a lot of these kids who are suffering from these feelings often grow up to be gay. They're just gender non-conforming. Often there's a high level of autism. There's other reasons to explore sometimes. Um, but, you know... Well, all at, the time, I think. All the time, right, exactly. So, uh, but you're, at, at Sex Matters, you know, your concern isn't so much, correct me if I'm wrong, but that people can choose to call themselves whatever they like, but rather uh, that we shouldn't change public policy to reify a kind of uh, metaphysical belief that some individuals have. Yes. I mean, people can wear what they like, um, call themselves what they like, have sex with, with anyone that would have them, as, as J.K. Rowling said. Um, but all those things are personal choices. The question is, what are other people obliged to do? Yes. Uh, and particularly in work, in schools, as public service providers, all of those places where we're not just able to say, you do you, um, there are obligations. And the law's, got, the, the law's not bad, but it's got very confused. And so people have come to think that if someone says, I'm the opposite sex, then legally you have to treat them as the opposite sex. But of course you don't, and it's not safe to. And of course it's considered hate speech sometimes if you, if you don't go along with that belief. That's a problem, isn't it, we've seen in Scotland, we've seen very much in the new hate speech bill in Ireland, uh, this idea that, that people are being compelled uh, to utter beliefs that they don't hold. Uh, that's the real problem here, isn't it? Well, yes, what it's demanding is that we suppress our own powers of rational cognition, our own capacity to reach judgment concerning what is real and not real, mm. to this ideology. Now, this is a proto-fascistic 
illiberal development. And um, it's extremely dangerous. But you have to see, I think, transgender ideology not in isolation, but as part of a kind of broader political movement, a sort of axis of authoritarianism that includes extreme environmentalism, critical race theory, the campaign to decolonize uh, the curriculum in uh, universities. This is all part of an authoritarian movement that now exists in this country and throughout the Western world that's seeking to establish state control over language and thought. Now, it's interesting because your report specifically talks about Labour, but this isn't really a left-right issue, is it? You know, the, Not you, at all. You mentioned Theresa May. The Conservative government has presided over some of the worst excesses uh, of this. Uh, but, Maya, do you think that Labour will be, well, worse, actually? Because, I mean, Keir Starmer has now at least discovered that uh, a woman is an adult human female. That's a step in the right direction, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, end of July, um, Labour came out with, they, they said they want to modernise, simplify and reform the Gender Rec Recognition Act while protecting single-sex spaces. They didn't say how they're going to do that. Um, but, but that is also a step in the right direction. It's, um, it's mixed messaging, though, isn't it? It is, and, and, they're, and they're going to have to work out what any of that means. Yeah, but isn't the obvious solution to the, is the liberal approach, which is to say you can do whatever you want, identify how you want, etc., but we do have boundaries in society based on sex, and they are important. Yes, I think that, that's basically the principle. Um, but the, the devil's in the detail. Yeah. You know, what, how does that work in schools? How does that work in prisons and, and so you, on? Are you worried about this notion of uh, speech or beliefs being criminalised? I mean, you yourself have had a, a, a very uh, protracted experience regarding this because you were uh, effectively put through the ringer for your belief that sex is immutable. Yes, I mean, I, I lost my job for it, um, and in the end my belief was protected, but people are still being reported to the police for tweets mm. um, and being called in for interviews and having hate speech marked against them uh, for saying that men are not women. And why is that happening? Because, Mark, do you, would you know, Maya's case was a landmark case in which it was confirmed that the belief that biological sex is real, that sex is immutable, mm. that no human being has ever changed sex, which is a matter of fact, that that is now a protected belief in law. That being the case, why are people still being uh, investigated and arrested for state really otherwise? Really good question. If you went into the Thames Valley policing area and you were to reproduce the English Oxford Dictionary's definition of a woman and were to put it in a leaflet you were to hand out, you would be arrested for a hate crime under Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Mm. The police in that area said they would arrest you for stating what is objectively true. The police have given themselves a power with no basis in law whatsoever to establish essentially a political register, uh, a register of political criminals, uh, which is entitled Non-Crime Hate Incident uh, Database. Yep. So that if you know, any one of us here tonight was to be reported by, say, Stonewall or Mermaids or some group like that for alleged hate speech, the police in the area in which we were reported, the police could then put us on this database with no right of appeal whatsoever. Yes. And these, this database has significance in terms of DBS checks and that sort of thing. Where does this power come from? And where Parliament they... didn't give the police this power. The Association of Chief Constables gave themselves the power to pursue and harass people politically on this yeah. issue. And where does this lead? I mean, I mentioned Ireland and I mentioned Scotland. Um, uh, this debate is going on and on. Do you think that you're on the winning side of this? Do you think things are going in the right direction? I think there have been significant turning points. I mean, my case, obviously, but also... And, and what that's led to in terms of debate in the UK. Um, and just before the summer, we had... the parliamentary debate on this proposal to change the Equality Act to make clear that people are protected against sex discrimination and against gender reassignment discrimination. So, you know, if someone's trans, they should be able to get on a bus, get a taxi, go to a restaurant, do all the things that everyone else can do, but it doesn't give them the right to use spaces for the opposite sex. So those two things, sex discrimination and trans discrimination, should be clear and separate. But activists are claiming that the uh, Equality Act, when it said sex, always meant gender identity. Well, this is what we're asking the government to clear up. I mean, you shouldn't need 
a degree in gender studies or a law degree to run a cafe. You know, everywhere that you have male and female signs on the door, the, everyone needs to know what that means. It yes. should be simple. And are you not frustrated, Mark, because you've worked tires, tirelessly uh, at this, but the very fact that you lost your job and you had to take it to a higher court just to state facts, it, I mean, it, this must be... The fact that they call it a protected belief must be frustrating in of itself. Uh, it is, but we're, I mean, it's so important that we fix this. You know, that, I mean, fundamentally, they're sterilising gay children. Um, you know, so the fact that I lost my job and the fact that I was able to turn that into something good because people use my name to um, stop debate being closed down ultimately is a good thing. But we have to get this out of schools. We have to get clarity in, into schools that children are boys and they are girls and that cannot change and schools are there to keep them safe.